So as promised, uh, yeah, we'll be building 3D mold mesh today. Okay, and this 3D mold mesh game you guys can run on your uh, laptop, on your desktop, on your iPads, on your phone, in AR, in VR, in all formats, on all devices and in all formats. Yes, so as I was saying, this is going to require a bit of mathematics. And let me uh, show you guys what I'm talking about. Let's start with a square. Everybody knows what a square is? Yeah? A square has four sides and four equal sides. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Keep on messaging. Keep on messaging from regarding my questions or turn on your mics and speak about it. If you guys, uh, yes or no, whenever I ask a question. Okay? So a square is a, is a four-sided shape that has four equal sides. Okay? So... And uh, so here I have a square, I have a red colored square. It has a side length of two meters, okay? It has a side length of two meters. So you can see that from this side, to, from this point to this point, the distance is two meters, okay? And from this point till this point, also the distance is two meters. Same goes from for the top, same goes for the top, and same goes for the left side. Alright, so it has four sides and all the sides are two meters in length. Now, this point here, O, this is the center of the square. Okay? So now, first things first. Tell me, what is the distance from the center to the left and right side? What is this distance? Exactly. One meter, right? So from the center, this is one meter. So center divides everything in half. So this is also one meter, right? All all the distance from the left and right sides are one meter. So from the center, all the everything is one one meter apart, right? And that's how a square is made. So now I'm going to put the square on a number line, okay? Uh, on a number line so whenever you add any object in hatch whenever you add any object even inside the hatch workspace so the position of any object is determined by the center of the object you can see here there is a yellow point for this box that is at the center of this box right yes guys everyone yeah so Position of any object, like even if this mole that you're seeing, this mole's position is defined by the center of its object. Okay? So here, when I have the square and I'm placing it at the center of, at the center, so what I'm doing is I'm placing this square on a number line. Okay? I'm calling this number line as the X number line. Okay? X number line. And I'm placing the square at the position 0 for x. What that means is I'm placing the center of the square at the x0 position. You guys can see the center of the square is at x0. Right? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So now I have a question. If I place another square such that the this the gap between the square is of one unit okay then what is the position of this second square message in the group message in the group the number the answer that uh, the number that you guys think is the position of this new square this this center this point arnav has messaged everybody Okay, keep on, keep on. Uh, it's it's a very it's a very uh, base simple addition. Don't 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 worry if you get wrong. I will explain you guys how what the answer is. Okay, so Sohail says three, uh, Dravangi says two, Arnav says four, uh, Slayer says uh, three, uh, Kabir says two, Arna, uh, Hamza says four, Devansh says four. Okay. Okay, uh, this, this, this is why I uh, told you that look at the center, okay? Just, just look at the center, okay? In this image, look at the center, okay? We are going to go, to go through the whole thing step by step. See, this is the center, this is the, this is the center of the square, right? So what is this distance? 
this is one right yeah and we know that this distance this distance is also one right yes guys and Un unmute your unmute your mic say say uh, yeah okay so this distance is one this distance is one and from this center what is this distance this is also one right yeah so what will be the position of this center this center of the square on the x well on the x number line it's going to be one plus one plus one yeah so this is the position of this is going to be three the number here the number line so you see here here i had removed the number line numbers in the in this slide just so that you guys can figure out by yourself but think for yourself if you add if i add a square here of two units like this the center of the square is at three very clearly yeah right guys everybody agrees yes, sir. yeah so now so what did we do how did we come to this three so you can see the value of this three here is basically equal to the side of the square the length of the squares sides two plus the distance that you want that is one okay and this is how you get the new coordinate value of the new square okay so now we do this let's say we want to add four squares so your first square will be at zero okay first square is at zero where will, where will the second square be it will be be at three units from the first square right now the third square this will be three units from the first square yeah yes yes so what will be the position of the third square this square here yes it's yes exactly so every every square every the center yes the center of every square is three meters apart from each other okay so the position of the squares are zero three six and nine are you guys seeing this? Uh, yeah, next would be 12. If you want to add another one, it would be 12, right? If you wanted to add another square here, what would be the position for this square? Minus. Think again. Think again. If all the squares are shifting by three units, then what would be this? Minus three. Exactly. Minus three. Yes, perfect. Awesome. Good. So, uh, you guys, you guys are able to see how uh, objects can get positioned between in a in a space, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so yes. you you can yourself you can yourself easily calculate where an object will be placed so that it looks it it achieves your orientation. So if you want if you want to place a four squares, which are two units in uh, width from with one unit apart from each other then they are basically going to be three total of three units apart from the center right yeah, yeah. so so how are these numbers going to be useful is because i'll show you so from here so the zero is three you can call the zero as three times zero three multiplied by zero right yeah, yeah? this three can be written as 3 multiplied by 1. Yeah? The 6 here can be written as 3 multiplied by 2. And this 9 here can be written as 3 multiplied by 3. Okay? So now think. Think of it this way. What we want to do in our game is in our game, we have... I, I will send you the link of this and we will be building this game uh, completely from the beginning. But uh, I have this mole, okay? And this mole, I want to change its position randomly, okay? So what will the logic be? I can tell my computer to select a random number bet between 0, 1, 2 and 3. 
right? I can I can tell my computer to select any random number from these four and then multiply the number selected by three. And that will place my mole object on any of these four squares. Right? True? Yeah? So we, we will come to how this random number is generated and then how we can modify the random number that is generated to become the numbers that we want. We want the numbers to be 0, 3, 6 or 9. Okay, but we cannot directly generate numbers that are 0, 3, 6 or 9. Okay, computers can generate random numbers. There are very specific functions that generate random numbers and there are only specific ways they can be generated. So using those the random numbers that are, that are generated, how do we get to the numbers that we want? Okay, if, if we are able to make the computer generate numbers that are 0, 1, 2 and 3, then we can tell the computer to multiply those numbers by into uh, with three right and we will get our squares positions are you guys getting this getting getting this point any anybody has any questions till now no awesome okay so now see uh, see we were doing this for our x axis the x position right I called, I called this as the x number line and we were placing all of our squares in the x axis, along the x axis, moving, moving along the x axis, right? Yeah, Hamza has a question. Tell me, Hamza. Um, so, uh, so why do we uh, say that uh, we put uh, 0, 1, 2 and 3 times like 3? Why don't we say that we just put 3, 6 and 9? Yeah, we, we will come to that. Our computer will not directly be able to generate a number called 3, 6 or 9. Okay? But we, we will come to that. I'll, I'll show you in code why, why we need this uh, multiplication with 3. You will be able to see it inside the code. Okay? We will come to that. Don't worry. But, uh, okay. Right now you guys are seeing that we were only placing the boxes in the x, x position. Changing the x position. Right? Yeah? So now let's say we wanted to, we wanted to change the uh, position in the z axis as well along the top. So if if we wanted another square above and then above. So all of these squares would also be 3 units apart. Right? So rather than just changing the x number to from 0 to 3 to 6 to 9, we can also change the z position from 0 to 3 to 6 to 9 and get the same results. Okay, cool. So now, now I have a question. Do you guys want to start with a template project or do you guys want to build this grid of squares by yourself? I will show you guys how to build the grid of squares if you want to build the grid, grid of squares. Or we can start with a template project that already has a grid of squares. Tell me or write, write in the message. I'll, I will, okay, let me do this. Let me send this link in the chat, okay? I'm sending this link in the chat. But I will show you guys how to build this grid of squares as well. As in why we were discussing all of this mathematics here. Okay? So, I have sent you guys a template link, okay? Open this template link and you will see a screen that is similar to this. Okay? Now, here... Open this link and go to your design tab. Okay, open this link on your uh, desk, on your desktop, laptop, or iPads or tablets. Okay, don't open it on your phone. You won't be able to code on your phone. Okay, so now you will see if you go to the, if you go to your design tab here, you have a grid of squares, a grid of boxes. Okay, now just click on the very first box, the very first box here. You will see that the position, the x position of this box is 0. See that the position has 3 values, x, y and z. Okay? The x position is 0. Just look at the number x, the very first position number. That is 0. And you will see the box has a width of 2 meters. Okay? And depth of 2 meters. So it is a square. It is just like the square we were talking about here. We have built a square box of 2 meters in uh, width and depth and its x position is 0. So now you will see 
there is a second box here and what is its x position look at the number here what is is this x exactly it is 3 just like we calculated here right this 3 so what we are doing is we are placing boxes such that the, the, the gap between the boxes are 1 meter apart okay so the second box is at 3 the sorry yeah the, the second box is at 3 the third box what is its x position 6 and see the fourth box what, what is its x position 9 right now come back to the first box select your select your first box again it's x and z both of them are zero here do you see that yeah now if you if you select your box that is behind the first box here this box you see it's x is still zero because this box has not moved in the x position right but this box has moved behind what does behind mean it means that the box has changed its z position so you will see that its z position is minus 3 see that yeah and similarly if you look at the box further behind it its z position is minus 6 and this box has a z position of minus 9 yeah so as you keep on adding boxes behind you will be moving each of these boxes minus three units back right yeah guys are you, are you guys getting my what, what we are saying here yeah so okay so let's lo, let's take a look at this box here okay this box is this box is three units behind sorry it's a third box behind and the second box on the left side so the x what will be the tell me the x position of this box three. Who, who, who said three who said three, three. uh sorry uh, i i couldn't see who, uh, who was speaking here can you say uh, your name again okay cool Shrizata was saying uh, this is three okay and what is the z position of this box minus six awesome perfect why because the z position of this box is zero so this box will be at minus three and then this box will be at minus six you can see here right and because the x position of this box is zero so only three meters to the right side so th x position is three okay so what you can do is you can if you don't want to start with this template you can also open up an empty project like on your dashboard click on the new project button and this will open up an empty project there you can simply add a box okay you can add a box of your own and then place them just like these are placed using the numbers that you calculate okay getting it guys so building this grid of boxes is very easy all right Building this grid of boxes is very easy. You can build this by yourself as well, if you want. Now, along with that, what I have done is, I have added this. Uh, so, have, do you guys watch Pokemon? Have you guys watched Pokemon? Do you guys know what Pokemon is? Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, so, uh, who, who can tell me the name of this Pokemon? <laughs> awesome, this is so cool. Okay, so, uh, yeah, this is Diglett. So, uh, if you click on your Add 3D Objects button here, in your design tab in the 3d models you can search for you can search for let's say a mole and you will get uh, some mole uh, like there are you can click on sketchfab as well and search for mole there you will find some mole objects some mole shaped 3d objects okay but i wanted to have a diglet so i in the poly option i just searched for diglet and there is this diglet here that i click that you click on the plus sign and you see the another diglet has been added here okay so you guys can just directly add your own diglet model and then what you can do is uh, because let's I, I have just placed this diglet on the first box so i know that the first box has the position of zero zero in x and z so i clicked on my uh, did, did somebody say something 
Shama, uh, Sayan, sorry, uh, okay, cool. Uh, so uh, once a model is added, yeah, once a model is added, you can just, if you place the uh, that this uh, position at zero in the X and zero in the Z, you can see this diglet has been placed in this in the same position as the original diglet, right? Now all you need to do is you can move it up and down and place it, make it look like it's standing on top of the box. Okay? So you will be able to do this by yourself as well. If you don't want to start with a template project, you can do this by yourself as well. So I'm deleting the original diglet. But yeah, so now once your project is, once this scene is ready, now let's code, let's code the functionality of this th 3D game. Okay, mole mash. What does mole mash do? So in mole mash, what happens is, the mole here, it keeps on moving, uh, appearing on, ra on random places. Okay, so what this mole is going to do is, mole is going to appear on top of these boxes randomly. It will keep on moving on its own to any of these box even uh, we would not know what box it would come at it would appear at okay hamza are you listening yeah awesome cool so first let's code how to move the mole okay have you guys uh, since you guys have coded before you you guys might would at least be aware of uh, the set x and set z blocks do you guys know about this about the set x and z blocks Yes? How many of you don't know the set X, set Z blocks? Raise your hands. Okay, or message in the chat if you guys don't know what. Okay, cool, don't worry. So uh, what we'll do is, so we were talking about the X and Z position of the boxes and of the mole, of the diglet, right? So what you can do is, on the left side, on the left side of the workspace in your code, in the code window, on the left side of the workspace, you just have to scroll down at the, and s look for the name of your mole object. Okay. So I know my, my mole object has the name low poly diglet. So I just click on this low poly diglet and it will show me a list of blocks. This, these blocks are the actions that I can perform on my diglet. Okay. So if you scroll down in this list of blocks, if you scroll down in this list of blocks, there is a block called set low poly diglet x to 1. Okay, let's bring this out and place it inside this when green play button click block. Okay, so now what this will do is this will set the x position of the diglet to 1. Let's see what happens when you, when you click on the green play button. See, <clears throat> the diglet moved right, slightly, slightly to the right. But this one is not making the diglet move on top of any of the... Yes. So we calculated that all of these boxes are three units apart, right? So the first box is at x0, second box has the x position of three, right? So if I change this one here to three, and then click on the green play button. Can you tell me what will happen? Can one of you tell me what will happen when I run the code? Yes, correct. See, it appeared on top of the next box. Right? Now, what if I duplicate this block here and I make this zero? What will happen now? Yes, because so this this block is also running. So this is setting the uh, diglet's x position to three, but then the next block is changing its position back to zero. Okay, but now tell me what will happen if I set its z to minus three? Which box? This box? This box or this box or this box? Tell me. Okay, look at the code very, very clearly. Look at the code. What is the what will the first box do? Yes, tell me, t tell me, tell me just this. What will this block do? It will make the diglet move to the right by one block. Yeah. And then what will this block do? 
Yes. So what will happen is this bl this block is making the diglet move right, and then this block is making the diglet move back. So the diglet will appear here. Getting my point? Everybody, see. Got? Got it? Yeah. If I if I make the this x six now, tell me what happens now. Will it move back again or will it only move to here? Will it move here, here or where, where will it? This, is this the position it will move? Yes. Yes? Okay, good. Why? Because the this has the x position of 6, 0, 3, 6 and z of minus 3. This is z 0, this line is z minus 3. Okay? Yes, it is the diglet is already on minus three. So even though we are seeing here minus three, this will not have any effect. Okay, so you guys are seeing what these numbers are doing to the diglet, right? Okay, now yes. let's delete these numbers. We want the diglet to move randomly, so we cannot give it specific x and z numbers, right? We want the diglet to move randomly. Okay, so next thing the next thing that we want to do is on the top left top left corner here you see globals there is a list of math blocks see this right here you see there is a block that says random number from 1 to 100 yeah bring this out and place it here like this Okay, so you can, so what this is doing, this will do is, this will set the x position of the diglet to any random number between 1 and 100. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, till, till 100, any number it can, my computer can choose and then uh, place the diglet to that x position. Okay. Hamza, look very clearly, this is where your the question that you asked of why we were multiplying by 3 comes in. Okay? So you see, my computer here, this block here can directly, can generate numbers that are sequential, that are specifically like from 1 to 100. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It, it can generate any of these numbers from 1 to 100. Okay? What do we want? We want the random number to either be 0, 3, 6 or 9. We very specifically want the random position. We, we want the diglet to only move in, in these grids, in the, on these blocks. So the x position of the, uh, of the diglet can only be 0, 3, 6 or 1. It should not be anything else. Right? But here, now see this block this will be able to generate numbers 0, uh, this will not be able to generate 0 first of all because 0 is less than 1, okay? Right? This will, the, if this is generating between 1 to 100 then this will not be generating 0. And then it will, it can generate a number zero, 3, it will be able to generate 6 and 9. But it will also be able to generate numbers like 2 or I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, when did I when did I get muted? Uh, just, just a second ago. Just okay. 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 Cool. So you uh, you guys were following this uh, random number well random number block, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I was saying that this cannot generate first of all the number zero, right? Because the number zero is not in between one and hundred. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now first of all, let's make it zero here. So if I say 0, so 0 to 100, so this will also generate 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, till 100. Okay, it will generate all of these numbers. Okay, we want the x number to only be 0, 3, 6, or 9. But this block will also generate numbers uh, that we are we don't need, numbers like 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. we don't need any of those numbers, right? So what we are going to do is, remember here, we discussed that the position of these boxes can be written as 
थ्री टाइम्स जीरो थ्री टाइम्स वन थ्री टाइम्स टू थ्री टाइम्स थ्री या सो वॉट वी कैन डू इज वी कैन जस्ट अल आर कंप्यूटर कंप्यूटर टू जनरेट अ रैंडम नंबर फ्रॉम जीरो टू थ्री दैट विल गिव मी नंबर दैट आर जीरो वन टू और थ्री राइट एंड देन मल्टीप्लाई वॉट एवर रैंडम नंबर इज जनरेटेड बाई थ्री Are you guys? Are you guys following what I'm saying? Yes. See, here let's let's do this. Let's just make it zero to three first of all, okay? And let's place it here. Let's ignore the z position, okay? So what I'm doing currently is setting the x position of the. Let me reload my game here. Okay. So this block is telling me, telling my computer that set the x position of the diglet to any random number between zero, one, two, and three. So see, every time I click on the green play button, my diglet moves to a number that is either zero, or one, or two, or three. Right? You can see it moving. I'm clicking on it. I'm clicking on my uh, green play button again and again to make the diglet move. Are you guys following what's happening here? Yeah. So what is this block doing? Yeah, tell me. Say, say. Uh, okay. Did you get disconnected? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what we, that's what we are doing. We are see, we are setting, we are selecting a random a number between zero to three, zero, one, two, or three. Okay. Now we know that if we have any of these numbers, we can get the position of these boxes by multiplying that zero, one, two, or three with three. So if you go to math here, and you see there is a block called one plus one. If you bring this out. you can remove this extra one from here and place this random number block inside of this 1 plus 1 block change this plus to multiplication and then multiply this by 3 actually i am saying that instead of the random number block can you use the or block so how will you use the or block tell me Yes so that is something we can say in english right we can say that in english but there is no specific block here that does that activity this what what you're saying in english is exactly what this blo final block is doing it is setting the x position to 0 or so or is a logical operator that we use in coding but or is for uh, operations or is or is uh, for uh, com it, it's a compare it, it's a com uh, no let me just uh, remind uh, rewind yeah we you can't directly input the numbers like just the numbers that we want okay so what i'm saying here is uh, say use this random number 0 to 3 so if if the random number is 0 then what is 0 multiplied by 3 Yeah. Is somebody muting me again and again? Let me check. <laughs> don't uh, guys do not do not do not do not the sanad is saying he did not do it so don't 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 mute everyone i mean there's no way someone could mute unless they have hosts yeah yeah okay no worries let's let's come back to this so are you guys getting the use of this whole block that we are creating yeah yeah so now if i if i place this here inside my set x so my first 
my computer will generate a random number that is between 0 and 3 and then multiply that by 3 and now see every time I click on the green play button my diglet is on top of one of the boxes right yes because the boxes are at those positions okay if if the boxes were at different positions then we would see the 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 internal problem here is to find out the pattern in the numbers so that we can generate those patterns here okay here we figured out the pattern was zero was that the numbers were all multiples of three three times one three times two three times three three times zero okay and that was a very simple pattern so this wasn't this was a very easy thing to implement here okay cool and then so now now so you see it's not moving uh, back it's only moving left or right yeah what we have to do is not just set the x position to this random value also set the can any, anybody tell me what needs to be done here for the diglet to move Yes, we have to also change the Z position to the same, uh, to these, again, random numbers. Yeah, so you can duplicate this block here and change the X to Z. Times, so you click on math here and you go to 1 plus 1. Yeah, so the, you can change the plus to multiplication here. You have plus, minus, multiplication, division, and exponent. All th all five operators are here. Okay. So now, the difference here, the change that you have to do for Z is, you remember in the design tab, the, the position of the diglet was, get, was what? 0, minus 3, minus 6, and minus 9? Minus 9. Yeah. Yes, it was, all, all the Z values were negative. So it's not... Uh, going to be a multiplication between 0 to 3 with 3. We have to multiply it by minus 3 for Z. Okay? Or what you can do is you can generate a random number between 0 and minus 3 here and then multiply that number by 3. That will also give you the same result. Okay? Because between 0 and minus 3, what numbers do you have? 0, minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3? Yes, yeah? Sir. And what is minus 1? Yeah, what is minus 1 multiplied by 3? Minus 3. Yes, yeah? What is minus 2 multiplied by 3? Minus 6. And what is minus 3 multiplied by 3? Minus 9. Minus nine. And then similarly, you can have uh, ra generate a random number between 0 and 3 and multiply that by minus 3. So this will generate random numbers 0, 1, 2 and 3. And 0 multiplied by minus 3 is 0. 1 multiplied by minus 3 is still minus 3. Right? 2 multiplied by minus 3 is minus 6. And uh, 3 multiplied by minus 3 is minus 9. So you will still be able to get the same numbers. What, what I'm trying to say? Yeah, what I'm trying to say is you can have multiple patterns, multiple patterns for the same sequence of numbers. It just, it doesn't have to be a single pattern here. You can generate the same numbers in multiple ways. Okay? You don't have to just stick to one way to do it. Take it. So now see, anytime I click on the green play button, the mole is always on a new box. See? Are you guys following it? Yeah? Cool. So now, all we want our computer to do... Uh, say again? Okay, sorry. Uh, what was the last thing you guys heard? Guys, what, what was the last thing you guys heard from me? I was talking about... Uh, when you click on the green play button, the mole always appears on a new box. Okay, that is clear?
Yeah. So now what we want to do is we want the game, we want the computer to always move the diglet to a new position on its own. Okay. It should not wait for me to click on the green play button to move the diglet to a new position. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Are you guys uh, are you guys able to follow me? Yeah. So for these two blocks of code, these two blocks of code need to run again and again on their own. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So you, there are again there are two ways you can do it. I'll show you both the ways. Go to loops and timers, and you can use the forever loop here. You have a forever block. Okay. But the uh, problem with forever block is forever block. If you run this. Forever block runs very fast. See what happens. Forever block runs very, very, very fast. Exactly. Very good. Very, very good. Okay. Awesome. So you see with the forever block, there is a weight block here. So you can do is you can add this weight block at the bottom of your, just at the bottom of your forever. Okay. So what this will do now is it will change the x and z position of the diglet wait for two seconds and then change the x and z position of the diglet again so now when you click on the green play button every two seconds this will keep on happening again and again okay everybody clear guys yep so this this is one way to do it okay second way second way to do it is you can so so forever and uh, wait blocks are uh, also uh, useful. Also, there is a timer block that is already available in the hatch code. Okay. That already runs forever with a time that you define. So you can attach your code here, set your time and then run this. So you can see if I reload my game here and click on the green play button. So you see every two seconds, now my diglet will keep on moving to a new position. Same action, okay? Same activity is happening. It's just there are different ways you can code that activity. You can use the forever block and wait block. There is nothing wrong in that. Just let... Let me just check uh, who is okay. Just if I if I get muted again, just mess, drop a message or just speak up and I'll okay. Cool. So what I was saying was, did you guys follow follow what the timer does? No, no. But did you guys uh, understand? Did you guys uh, understand what the timer does here? Yeah. So see, uh, using the forever and the wait block is also correct and using the timer block is also correct okay timer one is the name of this timer so you can have multiple timers you you can have multiple timers in your code and then there are there is a remove timer block right so when you tell your com computer to remove a timer you have to give the computer the name of the timer that you want to remove Okay, we are not creating multiple timers here and we don't need to create multiple timers in most of the games. So this is not necessary most of the times, but in situations where you need to create multiple timers and uh, need to turn on and off timers based on user clicks. So the remo this timer name comes in useful then. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Okay. So this will keep on moving the diglet again and again on its own okay that, that that's clear right so the diglet will keep on appearing in a new position now what our game will do is in our game what we want to do is when we click on the diglet when we click on you see this there is this black circle here yeah it follows everywhere you look okay so this tells you, this black circle is telling you what is the thing you are looking at, okay, in the game. 
so this 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 black circle is the cursor in the game okay so when you take the cursor inside the diglet and then when you click on the diglet that will make that that is what is being considered as a hit in the game that is what for now in the code we can make uh, different uh, forms of mole mash where we can add a hammer and then actually smash the diglet but uh, for now what we are going to do is when you click on the diglet then that is going to be considered as a, a diglet getting mashed and your score should increase okay so for that now what we will do is if you in the scene layers here okay there is a cursor cursor object on the top okay you see player camera cursor cursor is this black circle okay if you click on the curve if you click on the cursor you will see the blocks that you can use with your cursor okay scroll down and you will see that it has this there is a block called when cursor enters object okay what you can do is you can also the, if you click on this enters object there are three different options when cursor enters so you see my cursor can enter the diglet my cursor can leave the diglet and when the cursor is inside diglet i can click on the diglet okay there are three different types of interactions i can do with my with my cursor on any object okay so here i select cursor is clicked at and click that then here you have to define the object so it when cursor is clicked at diglet that's what i have to define okay so what i will do is here go back to your diglet object on the left side and when you click on diglet the very first block here is its name see that uh yes shridhar tell me Yes. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll come to that. Uh, I I will explain it at the end of the at the end of the code. So here, first of all, let's see this. Uh, there is this uh, diglet name block. Okay. Cool. So you drag this out and place it inside the cursor block here. Okay. So this block now says when cursor is clicked at low poly diglet. It's very clear. yeah so uh, when it will be used is what i will tell you guys later on this enable notch adds this notch here so that it can be placed attached somewhere but events are generally most of most of our events for these objects don't need the notch so they have the cap on the top the notch is needed in special occasions i will tell you when they are needed for now we don't need it so i'll i'm ignoring it for now so here it says when cursor is clicked at diglet So what needs to happen when cursor is clicked at diglet? It needs to move the diglet to a new position again, right? So I can just duplicate the set low poly diglet x and set low poly diglet z. This both the blocks here as well. Okay, and let's increase our score. Okay, let's also add a score and increase the score. So what we will do is go to our variables. Take okay? a variables. and create a variable called score now set variable score at the so set variable score is a block now here we need to attach the very initial value of your score so when you create a variable score when you create any variable you need to give it a initial value okay so set variable score you can drag out this block here and then add the number 0 here for now at the beginning of the game the number should be 0 you can place it keep it floating around here or you can even place it above the timer block both is fine theek hai so i'll bring out this variable block here set variable and let me teach you a keyboard shortcut that is not covered in your classes so if you press shift and m on your keyboard it will generate this number block on its own you don't even have to go to the math option see just shift and m
press shift and m and you have a new number block generated similarly you can have a text block generated by pressing shift and t okay cool so now shift uh, uh, set variable score to zero that is done and what we will do is every time my cursor is successfully cl clicking on the diglet we will increase our score so what you can do is go to variables again and select change score by one and place it here okay cool so now what will happen is i'm clicking on the green play button now my diglet is moving so i am clicking on the diglet now but you see nothing is happening i do not know what my score is what's happening here okay and even when i click on the diglet diglet doesn't seem to be moving to a new position so what's happening here okay let's go to our design tab and see in the design tab if you click on your diglet first of all you will see there is a properties panel for diglet okay in the properties panel if you scroll down there is a check mark that's that's called detect cursor events and we have to enable it for cursor to be able to click on a diglet okay this detect cursor events is play available for all the objects so you will see when you click on your box even for box the detect cursor event is there so for any object that you want to click you want the cursor clicks to be detected you have to select the object first of all and in the design tab in the properties panel select this detect cursor event check mark okay so now if you go to the code window now you will see that every time you click on the diglet let me see i clicked and it moves to a new position okay so how do i know it's clicking is working or not how do i know whether my score is working or not so for, uh, we are we, we are not displaying the score anywhere so for the easiest way we can check whether it's working or not if you is you can go to your events and at the very bottom there is a print hello world in console this block you can delete hello world from here place the print in console block just after changing the score block and then go to your variables place this score inside of it so we are saying print the value of score in the console what is the console console is available here so there is a button here called show script when you click on it it tells you the javascript code of your blocks you can refer to this to learn a, a bit about javascript as well and then there is a console here so this here you will see the score value getting printed so what i can do is yeah I can reload my game and restart this whole thing. Click on the green play button. See, my score became one, two, three, four, five. No, it did not become five because I was slow. But okay, you see, I'm able to see the value of score in the console here as well. So this print block is useful not just for printing scores but anytime you want to see whether something is working or not you can just so what do you, I'll, I'll tell you how this print block can also be be used what you can do is here you can use your print block to print the x and z position of the diglet every time it moves to a new position and see what's whether it's moving correctly or not so it, 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 it will be printing. If the clicks are happening correctly, it will be printing. Sir, it don't work with the blocks. What uh, is it showing? To see if print is working or not correctly, just attach it on the top, first of all, and give it some number. Okay? So you see, now if I, if, if I run this code, if I run this code, it's saying print score in console when you click on the green play button and when you when i click on the green play button the score will be zero so ideally the very first value here should be zero and it printed zero so 
not to this no, you don't have to shift to the javascript code you're not this is not an this is not a javascript editor here you can only see what your blocks equivalent of javascript code would look like okay yes show script button and then click on the console here this console tells you will help you figure out uh, see things okay for yourself okay cool so this now uh, with this much your you will be able to play your game on your screen on your uh, laptop or desktop okay let's make a few modifications so that we can play it on our phones and we can play it in AR. So first of all, uh, in your phone and in your... So Sorry, say again, Hamza. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you. So first of all, uh, let's... Uh, you don't have this print uh, console. The console is not available on your phone. Okay, is not available on your iPads. It, it's not available in the AR version. So what we need to do is, we can add a 2D text. Okay, so if you click on your 3D objects option here, and select your text property on the bottom, you can see you can add 2D or 3D text in the game. Okay, let's add a 3D, 3D text. When I click on 3D text, it gives me the fonts of the different text options. I like this font, this um, right is, I, I can click on this one and see a 3D text has been added in my game. So sometimes what will happen is, sometimes what may happen is, you might end up going too far from the, from the scene. So you might not know what you are looking at. What you can do is you can use this reset camera position button here. If you click on this, you will go back to the camera's first position and you will be able to stay in the scene. Okay. So now there is my 3D text here. Why do we need this 3D text? Because we want to display the score. Okay. So what we can do is we can place this, uh, you can place this wherever you want. So I'm going to place this X0, Z0. Okay. This is a, uh, now you see it's very big. So I can, in my 3D text properties, I can reduce its font size. It says 1.5 is the font size. I'll make it 0 0.5. And it becomes small now. Simple. Now what text do I want to display? I want to display score here. So you see it says value and it says my 3D text here. I can change this to display the score that I want. To, to, to display whatever I want. So I will say score colon space zero so we know that our initial score is always going to be zero so this will work okay i can move it slightly to the left to the center and slightly top and this is fine for me you can place it wherever you want so now in the code what we will do is we want to show the score value here not in the console but i want to show the score value here so I will delete this print score in console. And once I change this, once the score changes, what we can do is select, select your text 3D object here, scroll down and you will see there is a block called set text 3D text, right? You can place it here and then you can place the score value here. So go to variable score and score. So now, every time your score changes that this text will display the score value let's see if it works or not so click on the green play button see one two three this that it's showing me my, my score four see that simple right but it's not i want that score word to also be visible okay so we are going to do a new operation that we can do on text. We can join two different types of texts together. Okay, it's called joining two texts together. It's called concatenation. It's called uh, concatenation. 
if you use if you have used i'm not sure whether you have used excel or not <coughs> but in excel also in most of in javascript as well there is most of the languages have this concatenation uh, value concatenation property okay so what you will do is go to your text text option here on the left side and see there is a block called join uh, with two empty spaces bring this out <clears throat> take score out from here and display join this here At attach this join block in the space here and what we will do is we will add an empty text string here in the first option and then display the score this empty text i want it to say score so score colon and space that entire thing is what i want to display initially and then i want the number score to be visible okay so this will this is a text here and then this is a score value it will join both of these together and then display that in my text here are you guys following me uh so can I speak so speak loudly i can't hear you okay someone is saying the score is not increasing what i will recommend you uh, first of all did you uh, enable the cursor event for your diglet double check that click on the green play uh, click on this uh, diglet here and check whether this is selected this has to be selected okay and once you do that then okay to make it e to make your game easier what you can do is rather than saying when cursor is clicked at diglet you can say when cursor enters diglet okay and now you see when you click on the green play button any time cursor enters diglet the score increases okay uh what i will ask you to do is i will ask you to publish your project so give your project a name click you will be seeing a remix button here click on remix if you are if you are already logged in then you will see a remix button uh, if you are not logged in then when you click on the remix button it will ask you for login and remix or quick remix do a quick remix if you are not logged in and send me the project link and i will be able to see what uh, what's the mistake that's happening okay cool so now in the meantime uh what are, are you guys were you guys able to follow 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 this part of uh the score joining text yes, sir. yeah and i have changed this when cursor uh, is clicked at object i have changed this back to is clicked at object because if you just say when cursor enters object the game becomes very easy there needs to be a small amount of difficulty in your game everything cannot be easy okay so now you see it's uh, displays score colon and space all of that is written here if i remove the space from here there won't be any space between the score this uh, these alphabets and the number here okay so my what i have written here is s c o r e a colon and there is a space inside of this text string okay score and then adding the score variable here so that it's combining here okay cool so this will now run on your uh, everywhere okay this will run on your laptop and desktop to make it run on your to make it run on your uh, this thing on your uh, phone in ar all we need to do is you can duplicate this you can you can okay to make it run in your ar version you can just make it so that cursor enters object per um uh, when the curs cursor enters object then the diglet uh, moves to a new position this will this will uh, work in ar okay and uh, is clicked at object will work as a diff as a slightly difficult game on your laptop or desktop if you want the difficult game level for your ar as well then i'm going to suggest a very simple modification and that is we are going to create Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm showing you. I'm showing you. So when you click on variables here, let's create a new variable. And we are going to so you guys know what boolean variables are? Yes, sir. How many of you know what boolean variables are? No? Okay. Uh Devansh knows what boolean variables are. Hamza knows what boolean variables are. Sir? Yeah. Sir, 
What about Arnav? Okay. No, no. So you are you are, are you using the block called change score by, or are you using the set variable score to zero or to one? Which one are you using? See, there there are two blocks. If you are if you are using set variable score to, then it will only set the variable to a constant number. This change will increase. Otherwise, do the same thing. Publish your project and share it with me and I will look at the issue. Okay, publish a project and share it with me and I will look at the issue. Okay, so what I'm saying here is uh, uh, what do you guys uh, know what uh, Boolean variable is? Yes, sir. Devansh, why don't you tell me what a Boolean, Boolean variable is? Yeah, so Boolean variables are like a switch. You guys, uh, there are switches in your houses, right? Uh, switch can be turned on or off. Yeah, so a Boolean variable can only contain two values. It can, a Boolean variable can be either on or off. The on value is called true and the off value is called false. Okay? And uh, yeah, so what you can do is you can create a Boolean variable. You can create a, any variable, give it any name. So I'm going to give it a name. Uh, is cursor over diglet. This is the name of my variable I'm creating, okay? And initially, at the beginning of my game, because I know my cursor is not over diglet, what I'm going to do is, where I'm saying set score to zero, I'm also going to say set variable is cursor over diglet too. And then you go to your logic option here. Okay. You will see there is a block called true. Just take it out, attach it here and change it to false. So you see true or false. True means on, false means off. So we are setting, we are saying this variable is, this variable's value is off right now. Okay. So what we will do is, when cursor enters a diglet, then we turn on the variable, cursor is over diglet, and when cursor leaves the diglet, then we turn off the variable. Okay? So we will go back to our cursor object here on the left side, bring out the when cursor enters object, place the diglet name block here. So when cursor enters object, then duplicate the set variable block set variable is cursor over diglet and attach it inside this so when cursor enters object diglet then set variable is cursor over diglet to true when cursor is inside diglet then this variable is on and duplicate this and say that when cursor leaves the object then the variable is off again why we are doing this is we are doing this to make our code run is run in mobile or and in AR. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Arnav is asking what is the notch. I will show you guys what is notch. Uh, there is this enable notch button at, at the end of every yellow block. I will show you guys what this does later on. So now you have when cursor enters object, when cursor leaves object and you are turning the variable on or off. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just need five minutes more, and we are we are almost completed. Okay. Log logic, logic, logic. Okay. So once we are able to turn on and off this variable, what we can do now is on your phone, on your phone, or in whether it is in running in AR or VR, what functionalities, what events do you have? can you control you can touch the screen you can tap on the screen right that's the one control that you very clearly have with yourself okay so if you click on your events hmm. so when you click on your events there is there is this block 
called when seen loads okay bring this out and if you click on the drop down here you see there is a block there is an option that says when seen is touched so this is we are doing this we are doing this is cursor over deglet variable for your code for your game to run in mobile or on your uh, ar mode as well in your tablets and in your mobile phones okay so we say when scene is touched okay we will increase the score if the cursor is over diglet if you touch your screen and cursor is inside the diglet that means you are hitting the mole okay so this is where this variable is going to be useful because we know that if the cursor has entered the diglet object this variable is on right so when scene is touched if this variable is on then increase score and move the diglet to a new position okay otherwise do not do anything getting the logic of the game guys everybody hamza are you bored <laughs> what are you doing hamza okay cool what about uh, what about you devansh adhishan uh, ruvangi sohail kabir arna uh, arnav and shridatta okay awesome you guys are following you guys followed what i mentioned here right so when the scene is touched if the cursor is over diglet if this is cursor over diglet variable is on then increase the score then do exactly this exactly this these four blocks okay and if the cursor is not over diglet then do not do anything so what we will do is when scene is touched you go to the logic options here and bring out this if block if block and place it inside this when scene touched okay and then you just bring out this go to your variables and then bring out your boolean variable that you created is cursor over diglet okay and you can directly place it here and this will work if this will work if this variable is on then your code will go inside of the block and if this variable is off then this code will not run okay so what needs to happen here exactly the same thing needs to happen that happens here when you click on the diglet object in your laptop okay so let's do this you can what you can do is you can duplicate duplicate all four of these blocks so changing the x position of the diglet theek hai changing the y z position of the diglet then changing the score value okay and displaying the score value in the text all of these four activities also needs to happen on your phone in ar and it will happen in ar when you touch the when you touch your screen okay but it should only happen when you touch the screen and your cursor is inside diglet theek hai so when scene is touched if is cursor is over diglet then change the x and the z position of diglet to a random number increase the score and display the score okay and on your laptop what will happen is this code will run where you're saying when you click on the cursor so on your ar app in your mobile phone and in your ar ar functionality there is no mouse click right the on your on your ipad if you are not using a wireless phone wireless mouse there is no mouse click action defined for your ipad and similarly for your phone there is no mouse click action this is why we have to define a separate event of scene touched for your mobile uh, for the games that you want to build for your mobile phones in ar or vr mode okay for your laptop you can simply have this when cursor is clicked because mouse is uh, you you can click through your mouse all right are you guys clear yep we are done we are done this is this is the end of it 
so this this now will run your game in your phone in vr mode and in ar mode so you can publish your game by clicking on the remix button here login and remix and you will see that every all of you would have received some xp and uh, you guys will have received a qr code with the copy link for your project so you guys can share this with your friends and get uh, if your projects receive uh, you know project of the uh, like more of most of votes then your project will even get awarded project of the day okay and you can scan the qr code to run on your phone so you can scan the qr code using google lens on your phones if you guys have use google if you or any Q, normal qr code scanner you can scan it scan the qr code using that and it will run it will run in vr you will have to download the hatch xr ios app to run your project in ar okay so on your app store just search for hatch xr you will find the hatch xr app download it in your ios phone iphone or iphone or ipad both works and then scan the qr code and you will get the option to run your project in ar okay let me see all of you guys have built really cool projects today so kudos to everyone here awesome yes i can see lucky has pro this is awesome let me upload all of your projects this is cool all of you will have received xps for this awesome cool so uh let's uh, uh, let's see everyone on next saturday take okay? Uh, and I will send, uh, what I'll do is I will send the problem statement for this week uh, by tomorrow morning, okay? You will receive the problem statement in your mails and you will also receive the problem statement on the WhatsApp group. And just be active, build something uh, new every day and keep learning more about coding.